Here are some of the presets I used in some of his biggest placements. This is by far his most used preset, by the way. This is a mistake I see a lot of producers make. So as for one shots, which is more of a new Nick Mara thing, here's a little trick you need to know. So this is something I advise that you definitely try out. All right, what's good, YouTube? So in this tutorial, I'm going to be going over how Nick Mara makes his signature melodies. In this tutorial, I'm going to be going over his most used one shots, his favorite drum kits and drum sounds, how he makes his melodies, his go-to effects, his most used VSTs and libraries, how he makes his drum patterns, as well as various tips and tricks along the way. Also, if you want any of the drum sounds or samples that I use in this tutorial, there's a link in the description where you can download them completely free. All right, for those who didn't see my post yesterday, I know I've been kind of slacking in the last two weeks. That's because I'm doing all my finals, as I'm still in college or at least I was because as of yesterday I'm officially not um, I'm taking my next term off so I can just focus on music that means I'm gonna be able to make more content videos kits as well as beats so I can work with artists also it allows me to start live streaming so expect that soon and send your beats and samples as well to my email in the description because when I do that I'm gonna be doing a beat review so but that's enough of that let's talk about Nick so there's really two evolutions of Nick I guess there's the old brown hair high school Nick you know back when he was working with juice world back when he was on FL 11 and then there's the new one shot using blonde hair FL Studio 20 Nick Mara. I'm going to cover both these Nick Maras, how he currently makes his beats, what's changed and what hasn't. I don't know, I'm talking about Nick like he's a Pokemon. So let's talk about VSTs and presets. So Nick Mara used to use a lot of Omnisphere before he switched over to using one shots. I'm sure he still does to this day off stream. He also used to use a lot of Electra X and a little bit of Nex 2, specifically just for bell sounds and Electra X for ARPs. But for the most part, he just uses Omnisphere. New Nick, as some of you have probably seen, uses a lot of one shots though, like real try guitar sounds and stuff like that because the overall like sound of rap music has shifted towards that because I feel nowadays it's more about like real instruments like flutes, guitars, bells, and brass sounds rather than like synthetic layered reverb heavy sounds that you'll find in most VSTs. But again, I'm sure he still uses Omnisphere. I know that he also uses Nexus 3 a little bit because he has every single expansion pack and a lot of the sounds that were added to the new version are also very dry sounds that kind of like fit this new style. As for expansion packs, if he's not using default presets, he's really just using the most recently released sound kits and expansions from internet money members mainly for promotional purposes but also i mean everyone also likes to use new sounds so there's that too there are a lot of them so i'm just going to give you the banks that he uses the most for omnisphere he uses the jr hitmaker banks the lo-fi banks the juno banks specifically the analog world bank this is the one that he uses the most also the kc supreme and roy major banks as for the new nick mara his go-to one shots are usually the nico baron noah Mejia. i hope i'm saying that right humblebee and kill all Austin one-shot kits. And as for Electra X, for when he is using it, he usually uses the Roy Major or Bass Gutta expansion packs, which I've been an advocate a lot for on this channel. And he mainly uses it for like bell and arp sounds. You can also get all these things from their website at Wave Supply. That's a plug right there. Here are some of the presets I used in some of his biggest placements. First is Bell Blaze, which is the preset used in Ransom. This preset called Keys Twinkle from that Analog World Bank that I was talking about. This SY Remember Bell from the Bass Gutta Fantasy Sounds XP and Electra X. And this P LVZ Bells 2 sound from Nexus. Those are all the presets that were used in All Girls Are the Same. The LA Custom C7 Grand Piano from Omnisphere for practically every piano beat that he's ever made. This is by far his most used preset, by the way. As well as this classic nylon guitar preset. Those are the ones that were used in Bandit. The Keith preset from Lucid Dreams is called JD800 Crystal Roads in Omnisphere. The ARP that was used in Empty is from this Roy Major Pluto expansion pack in Electra X and it's called ARP Unknown. You know, I could go on forever, but you get the point. Let's talk about how he makes his melodies. So I'm going to switch to FL20 for this part because this is why I made the beat on. So Nick Mara is really a goat when it comes down to these emotional trap beats. And like I said in the last tutorial, emotional and sad vibes come from two note gaps. So when making your melody, take note of that. And when choosing sounds, avoid sounds that are really monotone, meaning they don't have like a lot of stereo. Or for those who don't know what that means either, sounds that aren't like very spacious, you know, sounds that are very linear and don't take up too much space in your headphones. Generally, these are the sounds that don't have like a lot of large and ambient reverbs. So avoid those. You still can however use these types of sounds and make them more stereo by adding effects like delays and reverb. Also, when making your melodies, this is a mistake I see a lot of producers make, is that they'll tend to start by creating their melody with like a preset that has a lot of reverb and effects. But if you do that, it's harder to hear the imperfections in your melody. So instead, you should really just use like a dry bell or piano sound. Like I was just talking about, this is why the grand piano preset is his most used preset in Omnisphere. It's because the old Nick Mara specifically understood this. Because the old Nick Mara understood this, so he'd make all his melodies on that dry preset before actually going and picking new ones to make the beat. What I mean by this is that a note like this won't 
won't sound the same as a note like this. But if I were to use a bell preset, they'd still sound the same as it's not sensitive to how long you hold the note when you play it. So I wouldn't advise using them, honestly. Here's one thing I find interesting about Nick is that he usually starts with the counter melody, which is something I don't see a lot of producers do. This is something I also recently started to do because I find it helps a lot because like the main melody is usually going to be much more complex than your counter melody, meaning it uses more notes. And I find when you start your beat with something like incredibly complex, it doesn't give you like a lot of space to be creative and add new things. So start off with a simple melody. Also, when you make your melody, consider that the majority of the time, your main melody will sit in a higher octave than your counter melody. So don't be trying to like make the counter melody in like an insanely high octave. And also don't be trying to make your melody if you're going to start with that in an insanely low octave. So when you've made your counter melody and main melody, usually what Nick will do to make the B more interesting is that he'll just add like a few notes, usually like an extra pattern in the second part of the melody just to add variation without overdoing it. One thing you can try that old Nick Mare did a lot is you can go on your keyboard and hit Alt R and what this will do is open a randomizer, turn the pattern off and then just go down to the levels and mess with this velocity knob that's down here. What this will do is make it sound like the keys in your piano roll were played by hand as when you actually like play the keys manually the velocity of all the notes will never be consistent so try that out because it'll make it sound a little bit more real. So as for one shots which is more of a new Nick Mare thing here's a little trick you need to know. If you like how the one shot sounds but you don't like its duration what you can do is go into instrument properties here and then there's this envelope that allows you to change those things. To turn it on all you need to do is click on use envelope right here and treat this line like the volume of the sound that you're using. If you increase the attack like this you can see with the line the sound is going to fade in a little bit more. The whole time will extend how long the sound plays, the decay will determine how long it takes for the sound to fade out, and the release time will do generally the same thing. The only difference being when you release the key with no release the sound will instantly cut off but with release the sound will still fade out even after you've let go of the key. And yeah, tweak with these however you like. This is something that you need to know if you want to use one-shot sounds. So in this beat, before I mess with the envelope, the melody I made with a one-shot preset sounds like this. But with these envelope settings that I made on, the new sound sounds like this. One thing he does a lot with his one shot sounds is he'll add these slides to give his leads like this cool little pitch bend effect, kind of like what we talked about with the 808s in the drill tutorial. But overall, he's not using that many effects on his one shot sounds. But one thing he does tend to do is he'll record his one shot melody first and then he'll just mess with the pitch. He sometimes chops and like rearranges the sample or you might like reverse it. It's really up to you again. Like I said in the Pierre tutorial, when you sample yourself, there's like a bunch of tips and tricks that you can do that you simply like can't get away with, with any sort of effect plugin. Another thing that old Nick used to do is to make his beats more interesting, he would take the basic chords used in the main melody and he would lay them out in a separate piano roll. Then he would take any sort of art preset, mainly ones from Electra X, and just layer it on top of the melody. The reason you want to do this instead of just copying the entire melody over is that using too complex of a melody with ARP sounds will just make it sound all over the place. And since we want to layer it over the main melody, you kind of want to have it just sit in the background. And you know you can't do that if you're using just like way too many notes. Yeah, but that's everything you need to know about how he makes his melodies. Let's talk about the drums. So even though Nick Mara is like a super experimental producer, he still sticks to like the basic sounds that just work. Like you'll see him use this like kick a lot called the Port of Miami kick. I remember telling myself like, oh yeah, I gotta have that sound because you know, Nick Mara used it. Same with like the official Trap Clap, Metro Hi-Hat, and Metro 808. Those are common sounds that you'll see him use in his streams. And when I got them, I felt like an idiot because right away I realized that they're just like the Rack Kick, Lex Luger Clap, Spins 808, and Hit One Hi-Hat with a little bit of reverb on it. So in other words, they're all like essential sounds that everyone is going to have. So I'm trying to get to is don't feel like the need like you need to use like the exact presets he's using. He's not really doing anything that complex. So those are all like essential sounds that you don't need to go looking out for like crazy to find. He also uses the same general levels for these sounds, specifically with the Lex Luger clap. What he does is he just turns the velocity all the way up and he doesn't touch anything else. Since he does this a lot in his beats, he's trained his ear to like understand how all the drum sounds should be leveled relative to this one. So this is something I advise that you definitely try out. As for 808s, Nick uses mainly longer, more stretch 
stretched out 808s. As for 808s, Old Nickmare tended to use like long stretched out 808s. Specifically, the one that he used the most was called the Sanctuary 808. But nowadays, he tends to use the more trendy but stubby 808s like the Zay and Transcend 808, which is just the Pierre Born 808 if you wanted to know. The only thing I find worth noting about Nick is how he makes his hi-hat patterns. So when he makes his hi-hat patterns, what you'll tend to see him do is that he'll just lay down one specific hi-hat roll and then he'll copy and paste the basic two-step pattern and he'll just drag it around to points where he sees fit. This is the same idea as what I talked about with like the little Uzi melodies is that when you do this, you're forcing yourself to be repetitive and not use like these ridiculous amount of hi-hat rolls. So in other words, keep it simple. I'd say don't use more than like four types of hi-hat rolls in your beats. But yeah, apart from that, there's not much else you need to know. And finally, as for effects, if you quickly want to know, the main reverb that he uses is this Valhalla Vintage Verb. He uses gross beat and halftime a lot, mainly gross beat to add rhythm and halftime just to slow down his melodies. RC20 to make everything sound more vintage. And finally, these are the effects that I find he uses the most. They're the Sound Toys effect banks, specifically the effect rack banks, usually the few presets to make things sound a little bit more like real instruments. And this Echo Boy plugin, which I've talked about before, is just being like a delay reverb echo effect plugin that makes things more stereo and spacious like we talked about but yeah that's going to be it for effects as well as this tutorial honestly at the end of the day no matter what i talk about in this tutorial i feel like the best way to improve your sound is just by watching one of his lives then what i'd say you should do is step by step just make the exact same beat as him and change it up a little bit just to make it your own or in other words what i'm trying to say is actually try to apply the things that i'm talking about in these tutorials because no matter how much i tell you these things you know you won't really learn it if you don't actually apply it so i strongly suggest you try these things out but yeah yeah, make sure to follow my Instagram and Twitter at Fin of the God. I do polls on there before each video to decide exactly what it's going to cover. I'm also doing giveaways for like VSDs and drum kits, as well as various posts on what I've been doing. Speaking of which, I've been giving away my personal drum kit there after like every video, so go check that out. If not, you can just buy it at my beat store, which is linked in the description. But yeah, apart from that, make sure to like, subscribe, and peace.